Line 1D. Medicaid waiver payments not reported on Forms W-2 Box 1. So enter your taxable Medicaid waiver payments that were not reported on Forms W-2. Also enter the total of your taxable and non-taxable Medicaid waiver payments that were not reported on Forms W-2 or not reported in Box 1 of Form W-2 if you choose to include non-taxable payments and earn income for purposes of claiming a credit or other tax benefit. So note that generally, obviously, income is bad for taxes. So if you can not include something as income, that is usually beneficial. However, there are situations such as for the earned income tax credit when reporting the income may have a tax benefit because something like the earned income tax credit, for example, actually goes up uh, as earned income goes up, up to a certain point, and then basically it goes back down. So you end up with these weird situations where the IRS might have something that's trying to help people out by not including something in earned income, which is usually a good thing for taxes, but actually works to be detrimental to somebody because if they were able to include it in earned income, their tax benefit would actually go up due to refundable credits such as the earned income tax credit, which is a kind of an unusual type of situation, but can come up. If you and your spouse and his spouse both receive non-taxable Medicaid waiver payments during the year, you and your spouse can make different choices about including payments and earned income. See the uh, instructions for Schedule 1, Lines 8S, if you want to look into more detail on that. You've got Line 1E, Taxable Dependent Care Benefits uh, from Form 2441, Line 26. Enter the total of your taxable dependent care benefits from Form 2441, Line 26. Dependent care benefits should be shown in Box 10 of your Form W-2. So if you see that in Box 10, usually if you're using software to help you to kind of do the data input, it'll help you to show the boxes. That'll help you to run scenarios and, and help you to populate this information on the tax return. So software is helpful to kind of better think through what is happening. And so we might run some scenarios on this in a future presentation, but first complete form 2441 to see if you can exclude part or all of these benefits. Line 1F, employer provided adoption benefits from form 8839, line 29. So this is no, more of a somewhat unusual type of situation with the employer provided adoption benefit. So enter the total of your employer provided adoption benefits from form 88. 93 line 29 employer provided adoption benefits should be shown in box 12 so that's that all purpose box box 12 which then will have usually a letter next to it which will give you an idea of what is being done there you can see more information about the letter on the instructions to the form w2 so it usually has the code section t for this item so, but see the instructions for form 8839 to find out if you can exclude part or all of the benefits. You may also be able to exclude amounts if you adopted a child with special needs and the adoption became final in 2022. Then you've got line 1G, wages from form 8919, line 6. Enter the total of your wages from form 8919, line 6. You've got line 1H other earned income so the following types of income must be included in the total on line 1h you've got strike or lockout benefits uh, other than bona fide gifts excess elective deferrals the amount deferred should be shown in box 12 of your form w-2 and the quote retirement plan in quote box in box 13 should be checked if the total amount you or your spouse of filing jointly deferred for 2022 under all plans was more than 20,500, ex uh, excluding catch up contributions as explained later, include the excess line on line 1H. 